70th birthday tribute. Um, very much speaks of the Tessa we know and love, I think. It's for Tessa at 70. Even in her fresh 70s, there's a dance in her eyes. A smile that seems to rise from where childhood lies, unclouded by its own surprise. But look into those eyes again. See a skirt of wise, a glint of steel prized equally. For poetry needs delight, a questioning mind and tempered steel to feed it from line to measured line. So hail, doyen of rhyme, unload your laden creels, cut loose as seventies reel. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> Tom, apologise for not being here as a various other people. This, um, this one is from Hugh Macmillan. Um, it's called Birthday Wish. Um, at this time from Fools and Angels. And uh, I, I, I think it must have been written to Callum <coughs> MacDonald, um, for whom, of course, Tessa launched the Callum MacDonald Pamphlet Award. Um, Hugh, also a winner. I am not a chance. <coughs> birthday wish. For all the wishes, flowers, I cannot send. For all the kisses, hours, we cannot spend together. May this card alone attend you on your birthday. Greet and not offend you. May Apollo and the Muses lend you favours that the very gods intend shall evermore be yours. Bend, condescend, touch, heal, misericorda, mildly mend. Orchestral angels solemnly ascend by day and night from sorrow to defend you. With my every word that I have penned you, I shall never more attempt, pretend my love is less than love that will transcend all lesser loves. My love, world without end. And the one I've chosen is um, one she wrote for Callum um, a year after his death, 24 second 2000, borrowing a line from Tennyson's Princess, and it's again about love, loss, and the enduring power of memory. Now sleeps the crimson petal, now the white, and you sleep on a year into your death. The white of silence and the red of grief like tulips lean and bow from my vase of sorrow. With every ache and emptiness contains your luster and largesse. Hecla, the volcano brims in flames where once you flew in Iceland's winter war and ash is clouding in the atmosphere. And great Limpopo spreads its water in wide floods from north to south and over earth, unbalance and abnormal death. The equinox approaches, gladly finches sing and still the wind is crying snow. How slowly, graspingly does winter go. Your love, a buried root, a constant, loyal thought, despite my sad impoverishment, provides some kind of nourishment. Now sleeps the crimson petal of your life, but white of memory is translucent, clear like pearls, like poems, all that we endure is glinting in the glass, a feast, a candle mass, for merry days and sabbaths too. The books you made, the love we knew. You said it would be good if you could read it out, it's a corker. <laughs> I think, she said, I think you'll know its origin. Anyone 
here who is privileged to be Tessa's friend will identify with this. And it's from Seven Valleys, part four, The Detachment. And it's number two, Love. I met a poet as I went drinking. I said to him, Poet, what will you have? He laughed and looked at me seriously. A pint of ale and a friend for life. Friendship and laughter where he was. Poetry, debate and argument, wit with learning and kindliness, songs, stories, merriment. I met a poet and found a spring of joy within me I had not known. The purest water of childhood, soft with peat and clear brown. I saw his verses spill over rocks and seep away into the moor. They would disappear into the sea, evaporate into the air. I cupped my hands to gather them and set them for the world to drink. I poured a glass into a book and let the city flow with print. We shared our talents, he and I, of skill and virtuosity. We spun a line on which to thread jewels of Scotland's poetry. <laughs>